This is the homework for 717, 718, and 719. For 17, A, does the information in the table support Nate's claim that cars with more horsepower cost more? Also, is there a relationship between horsepower and the price of a car? So, does it cost more for a car that has more horsepower? Is there a trend for that? Well, if you look at 500 horsepower, it costs 38,000. But here, 197 horsepower costs $40,000. It actually costs more. And here's 505, that's 23,000. Um, so if you keep looking at this table, what I realize is that I don't see any trend that more horsepower is gonna cost more money. Um, so what I'm going to do now is set it up as a graph um, and plot the points to see if I could see a trend line, if there's a positive association or negative association or no association. Now that I've plotted the points from the table, I can see that the points are scattered all over the graph in no general trend. I don't see a trend line where it's decreasing in price for more horsepower or increasing in price for more horsepower. So there is no association between the price of a car and the horsepower. The price does not depend upon how much horsepower a car has. In 718, you need to look at the scatter plots and determine which statement fits each scatter plot. In A, a city's average daytime temperature in January and its latitude. Recall that it the equator is at zero degrees latitude and the poles are at 90 degrees latitude. So as you increase in latitude, as you increase in latitude, the temperature is going to drop because as you, the higher north you go, the colder it gets. So two is the answer because the temperature depends on how high you are in latitude. For B, the weight of a car and its speed in a traffic jam on a freeway. If you're in a traffic jam, you're not going anywhere, you're not going very fast. So all cars are going to be going approximately the same speed. So here, the speed depends on the weight of the car. Well, your speed is all going to be about the same. So regardless of your, your weight. For C, the number of pets a student has at home and his or her grades. Well, a person's grades does not depend on how many pets a student has at their home. So it would look something like this. You could be really smart and have no pets, or you could be really smart and have five pets. They're not dependent on each other, so there's no association. For D, the cost of a person's home and the value of his or her car, well, the more expensive your car is, tends to be the more exp people that have more expensive homes. So. As you increase in the price of a home, your, the price of the cars that person may own will also increase. So there's a positive relationship. For 719, you need to match the system of equations in the left column with its solution in the right column. There's several ways that I could solve these systems. One would be to get both of these equations in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and then set them equal to each other, and then I can find the solution. 
um, that matches on the right side. But since I'm given three solutions, what I'm gonna do is just do guess and check and I'll plug in one of the solutions to see if it works. So I could start with zero and negative four, zero for the X, negative four for the Y and put those into both equations. If they're both true, then that's the solution to this system. The one that matches this system is one for X and two for Y. And so I put both of those um, into each of the equations, into the top equation and the bottom equation. And I solve this, both of those equations. I simplify and it ends up being four equals four and five equals five. So since both are true, the solution to this system is one comma two. Now that I've found the solution to one of the equations, I only have two solutions to try. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna substitute um, one of the solutions into the equation, and I'm gonna do zero and negative four, and I have to do it to both of the equations. And now I simplify each of these equations. 2 multiplied by 0 is 0. 3 multiplied by negative 4 is negative 12. And I end up getting negative 12 equals negative 12. 0 equals 0. This is true. This is true. So the solution to this system is 0 and negative 4. Now, the reason why I chose the substitution method as instead of setting them both equal to um, into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, is I only had three, I already had been given three solutions, so I thought it would be faster to do it this way. If you want to put them into slope-intercept form and set them equal to each other, that's um, a great way of doing it as well. For C, I didn't even need to um, use the substitution uh, method um, because it was the last option available, so I knew the solution was 3 comma 7.